Does everything that we go through in life have a purpose? Is there a purpose to everything? No matter how simple it seems to us, there's a purpose and life will give us that test again if we don't get it. Yes. It sounded like everybody went, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, is comedy, like I find everything funny, like sometimes like it's inappropriate. Is comedy pain? <laughs> Sign me up for that. That's funny because my massage therapist believes that the tickle spots on our body uh -huh. is um, trapped trauma and pain, but we don't know how to process it. So our body perceives it as oversensitive, which turns into the giggle like, the, oh my God, that tickles when you touch. I mean, Jamie, I'm bad, like bad, bad. Like we were walking for an example and I'm like... <laughs> Desi and I were walk, taking a walk and there was a dead rat in the sidewalk or whatever. And we were talking about how it's sad nobody's moved it and it didn't have a proper funeral and stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's probably Ratatouille from the movie and was just going to get some ingredients to cook and got killed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I joke like that all the time. That's not nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's probably just going to get some ingredients for a recipe and got killed in the street. <laughs> but I mean, I just have a sick sense of humor like that. And I don't know if it's from pain or what. Griffin says it is a coping mechanism. Okay. But that laughter is not an expression of pain. Like if that rat hears me in heaven, is he, is he or she thinking, what a fucking asshole? <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily. That rat could be laughing its ass off because okay. it's being compared to being the ratatouille. Right. And didn't get a proper funeral. And looked that good. Right. Um, Griffin says you, you use it for a diffuser. You use it to pacify situation, to pacify your own emotions, mm -hmm. to deflect. Mm -hmm. And um, to bring the vibration up because that you don't want to resonate with what's coming at you. Well, my dad checked me one time when I was little and I needed it. Um, I used to would have said when I was little, ew, gross. And my dad goes, really, that's your reaction? What about the rat? And I was like, oh, yeah. So now I don't go there anymore. Like he made me look at it differently. Like. How dare I stand in entitlement like, ooh, that's so gross. You know, what about the poor little rat that suffered that death? You know what I mean? Like, so there was, he was teaching me compassion and empathy and all kinds of good stuff there. You know, because it is a normal reaction to go gross, ooh, not want to look. Instead of being empathetic, like, what about the poor person that went through that or the little rat or whatever just trying to get his cookware <laughs> <laughs> he's making spaghetti and meatballs mom <laughs> your mother said that it was a good lesson very it it's hurt me when he said it because i was ashamed at how i looked you know like oh i didn't know it sounded like that but she said um to add to it that we need to be aware we all process you know indifference in a multitude of ways right so compassion not only to how you react but compassion to how others react Griffin says which should totally take us into the next question of what is it when you're offended it's like Come on, really? Oh, okay, you're offended. Now what? You have to stand up and defend it? You have to correct somebody? Well, they might not be wrong. Just because my mom told a joke about a dead rat, she's not wrong. Right. She's allowed to have that. Um, exactly. But if it offends, yeah. Exactly. Exa Griffin, you read my Facebook. Just because I disagree with you does not mean I hate you. We need to relearn that in our society. I said, note to self, stop being so damn sensitive. 
Ding, ding, ding. That's amazing. I read yeah. that yesterday because it is true. I feel sometimes like people don't like me if they don't agree with me or like what he's saying. Yeah, they get offended. Right. And then they automatically start in on judgment. Right. And how they need to defend their own thoughts. And he goes, it's fine. If you're offended, take a note. You don't like that stuff. But you don't need to speak up and change the way that other people are. You're not right. the boss of them. Yeah, not the boss of me. Um, I like it that because it reminds me of where you guys reside, Griff, the home. is like, it's just hard for us to gather that. Like, I've shared that with so many people that where you are, you can think, Mom, you need to take off a pound or two, and we don't get all upset the whole day, or you're not having a good hair day, or whatever, and we don't get sideways. Like, you can think the truth, and the truth to you, whatever you're thinking, you don't have to eggshell it with everybody. And you can still be a great person or a great spirit, you know? Griffin goes, it's so true. I can't tell you how incredible it is to live here and not have to eggshell. Right? <laughs> eggshell. Egg he goes, we're going to make that a verb. Yeah. Eggshell is the worst. Eggshelling. Right. Eggshell is the worst. Um, <laughs> it is. Um, why have we, okay, it leads to another question about eggshell talking. Why have we been so taught to be afraid or it's inappropriate to talk about death or it's morbid or it's like we all have that ticket. It's the weirdest thing. Everyone has that ticket, but some people don't want to talk about it, won't talk about it, are afraid to talk about it, are offended by it. And why do we think that we need a hundred years to live and death is a bad thing at a young age or any age or whatever? That's a great question. Griffin's taken the first one. Okay. Um, why do we see death as a negative? Yes. He said back, you know, centuries, centuries ago, uh -huh. death was not negative. It was, it was celebrated. Oh, wow. It means that, you know, you were complete no matter what had happened, whether it was an accident with an animal or, you know, a misfortune or an a, a drowning or just anything. Didn't matter. Mm -hmm. You were seen as being called back and it was honored. Didn't mean that there wasn't any more grief, but it wasn't seen as negative. Heaven couldn't wait for you, Beyonce, listen to it, Jamie. Beautiful. Oh, really? Yeah. Griffin says, as far as I can observe, when we started to create systems around belief, like religious, okay, we learned what power was, and we as people learned that one of the biggest mysteries in life is when do you die? Right. And we could use that to the benefit of serving the town or serving even the church, serving the government. You know, what will you do to give back before you're gone? Leave a mark on life. And so it became this, what is your purpose? You know, and you must do that. And since we're encouraging and coaching you, you know, follow our system and follow our rules. Now we have tiny little soldiers and tiny little people out there that are doing our work that we want to put out there. And you haven't even realized that you've given up on what you naturally would have believed in or naturally would have grown into because we've now given you an agenda that you're unaware of. Right. And he right. says, I think that's when death came to be scary, when the belief systems came in. And then the belief systems, the religion, is where we had the devil become introduced. And the devil was always responsible of taking you early. Um, you know, um, we're just talking, he says, you're European, you know, kind of Catholicism. Um, things of that nature, because he says back when even in um, Asian, 
I'm looking at a map in my head. Can you see? Asian, <laughs> Ireland, Celtic, you know, kind of Viking, things like this, and African belief systems, tribal, um, Aborigines. You know, there's no devil role. There's nighttime and daytime. You know, there's duality and difference, but there's no negative force that comes and pleads the case of why you need to die. And so religion ran with that and claimed that you need to live this particular way or the devil will kill you. And then it became this feared thing and right. associated to negativity because if you died, it was bad. It meant you were doing something wrong. The devil would take you. You were in the wrong place. You were a bad person. Okay. So when you get to where you are, wow. Jesse, well, yeah, wow is right. Just when had to get, think about it. When you get to where you are, Griff, everyone is happy when they get there. Not right <laughs> <No>. away. <It's, laughs> yeah. It's settling in, but everyone know I not heard anybody that wanted to come back. Like right away. Like, I mean, your life's not being offered back to you, but do you... he says, Well, let me explain. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen him do that hand gesture before. <laughs> Let me explain. Yeah. When you're here, at the beginning, you're still mm, kind of shaking loose some of your humanness. Where you're like, I'm in a different place. I'm separate. Then you start to realize that there are ways that you can communicate to your family, whether it's this way like we're experiencing now as a translator or I go to their higher consciousness and I can tap into their life and talk to them. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I know that's not what many people would call like the real deal. Like right. I'm not sitting face to face and talking to you, right. but it's like a simulator right. where we can have these conversations with each other and I'm not feeling at a loss. I'm not feeling I need to run back to earth. I can't get back into that life, but I can still talk to all the people that were in it with me, my friends, animals. Thank you. I went, and, and he goes, plant life. Jamie has to always include the plant life. <laughs> Do you okay. feel it, Griff, or mom and everybody, when someone hears you? Do you like, oh, bingo? Do you get excited? He said, yeah, it's like a, it's not a zap, but it's like a, a, a zing. I guess that makes sense. Like right you're here. like, hmm. dusting off your shoulders, like, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. And they're thinking about me. It goes, it's instant feedback of communication. It's not like I go, oh, mom pinged me this morning. I need to get back to her around two o'clock. No, right. it's like, you get it and you, you give it back. It's like, right. we're all part of one. Right. As though it's elements in the same. Right. Elements of the same particle. When you get there, Griffin, eventually, do you feel like you can laugh at life? Like, wow, I took that too seriously. Like you laugh at yourself a little bit. Like it wasn't yes. that serious. Yes. It was, it was a, it was a learning experience and boy, did I let that get me. You know what I mean? Yes. I because I'm speaking from my experience and the answer is yes. There's a lot of shit that I look back on because I'm not even that old. Right. And I look at how I held on to something or believed in what somebody told me without even thinking twice or going, I should research that or I should ask so-and-so if they really said it. No, I believed them. And right. it was, he said it was detrimental to the situation. Right. On your self-esteem, everything. Yeah. Right. Especially you died at such an age that's so hard, 18, 17, is like just teen years in general are like brutal, can be so brutal. Just yeah. like, yeah, just because you think everyone else isn't insecure, but everybody's insecure. <laughs> everybody's feeling the same thing. Even the cool, the people that you think look all cool and casual together. Yeah. yeah. They're having the same feelings. Right, right, exactly. 
Griff goes, wouldn't it be great if we had a machine kind of like the x-ray, but it just showed your emotions? Yes. Like you walked behind it and they're like, oh, this one is bump, 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 feeling this way and that way and that way. And then the next person could roll in and we could all just see what was happening. Yes, totally. And I bet one day we'll get more um, advanced on emotions and mental health and all that stuff. Because we don't almost don't know what to do with people now when they have issues mentally because we can't see them. God, that's true. Yeah. And we need to get there where we can help people you know, but, um, okay. Um, Griffin's rattling away about the, you know, vibrational healing being the way to move forward with keeping our bodies maintained. Okay. Then he's talking about, um, similar to the CBD, uh, with essential oils, the, the molecules that are in these uh -huh. that get into the body and that adapt, like cause an influence directly to the brain, directly on a cellular level. Right. He's like, you're going to start hearing more and more and more about aromatherapy and how it triggers the brain to create a certain outcome. That was yeah, a nice pause. That's a good idea because um, Dylan's been struggling with um, motivation issues, which is manifesting in depression and that's how it's manifesting itself, like lack of motivation. And um, maybe aromatherapy and stuff would help him too, you know? He's saying yes, it would. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that wholeheartedly. 